Moving on, you can also create new documents. If you wanted to create artwork from scratch or compile multiple files into one, you may want to choose this option. So Photoshop can be used to modify existing files or to create new blank documents. The new documents can be used to compile other images or portions of other images to create or to create original artwork from scratch. Whatever your intention, you can use the file menu to achieve this. So the first thing you can do is choose file open and you can open a supplied image, whether you open one of the file formats we talked about in the previous video or someone gave you a Photoshop file. Ultimately, I want you to make sure that you're only using Photoshop files for our class until I tell you to export it or save copies in different file formats. And so you'll immediately choose file and then save as. It'll save a copy of whatever you were given and then it will convert it to a Photoshop.psd file. Um, if somebody gives you a Photoshop.psd file, you can make the determination if you should save a copy or not. In general, I will always save a copy because I do not want to edit the original just in case I mess up horribly. Once you've done that, you can begin editing your file via the PSD file. Um, do not ever edit your originals and then continue to save your changes every few minutes while editing. In addition to this form of non-destructive editing where we save the original, there are also ways inside the Photoshop file that you can practice non-destructive editing, but we'll talk about that when we start doing some actual editing in Photoshop. If you create a new document, this is where uh, the new Creative Cloud update is pretty cool. Uh, if you create a new document by choosing File New, you can choose all of your settings if you know exactly what you want. Or if you click on a category, Photo, Print, Art and Illustration, Web, Mobile, etc. Um, Photoshop will try to help you. It will say these are common sizes that you might see a, a photo in, right? So I'm not a photographer. I'm a printer. My background is commercial printing. I teach all the printing classes or graphic communication courses here at Salt Lake Community College. But if I wanted to dabble in photography, I might choose the photo tab when I'm creating a new file and see what some standard photo sizes might be, which then would allow me to find a standard frame when I go to Michael's to buy the frame for the thing that I created. You can adjust the settings according to your needs and then select create and then you need to immediately save your document to give it a name and make sure that it's a, file, a Photoshop file uh, when you're ready to start working. And so the screen that you'll get when you first choose file new document will look similar to this and if you click on the photo tab you'll see across the top here you have some default photo sizes 4 by 6 2 by 3, 5 by 7. If you click on view all presets, there'll be more. Something that I don't really want you to get into too much just yet, because I want you to get a foundation in Photoshop first. Um, but if you wanted to, down in the second half of the screen, there's some templates that say these are some creative ways to use photography in your projects. And see this one that says textured geometric mass, and it's free. Uh, some of the templates will cost money. This one's free. You can't use this for your project in our class because you have to create things, but you could click on this and open up the file and see what they did and see how it connects to the things that we're covering in class. Chapter 9, we'll learn about selections and masks, and this might be a good time to click on the textured geometric mask to see how they use masks to set up this file. Um, on the right hand side, you'll be able to make decisions. So if you don't like any of the presets, so this first one says um, it's 7 inches by 5 inches and it's 300 ppi. Uh, PPI stands for pixels per inch. It's the pixels that you would see on screen and then we can translate that to the number of dots or halftone dots you would see when printing. So this would be a print image, which we'll talk about later um, in a different slide or on a different slide. If you didn't like those settings, you can override them over here. And so I could say that I wanted this image to be 8 by 4, whatever it needs to be. I could rotate it and it could be 5 by 7 instead of 7 by 5. You can change the resolution. You can change the color mode, which I would recommend always editing in RGB. You can change the background color, things like that. Some things that you may notice when you are choosing to create a photo-based document is that it will default to being a print photo. And so you'll notice the resolution will be 300, which is standard printing resolution. And then if you go down to the bottom here, under Advanced Options, there's a color profile. You'll be able to choose Adobe RGB 1998, and that is what I want you to use for our class. And then I said in a previous video, I don't know if you watched that video or if you remember, that your pixels don't have to be squares. For our class, they will be squares. But if you wanted to change it, you could kind of mess around and change the pixel aspect ratio. 
don't do it for our class, but if you wanted to kind of create your own document play around, you could. Photo templates are also available. You'll see that they have mock-ups. So um, I only talked about the geometric mass in the previous slide, um, but there are album layouts and there's photo mock-ups and different things like that. Um, when you start to create your portfolio, when you graduate, you're going to want to do mock-ups. And maybe this is something where you'd come and you'd use that mock-up. I would caution you, though, to use any of the defaults in any of the graphic arts programs because when they're a default, they become overused. And if someone sees your vintage photo effect right here and it looks exactly like the one in the template, they'll know that they, you didn't create it, you just hit a button. And for our class, there is a project where you'll have the option to create a vintage photo effect. And if I see that you just clicked on that, you won't get credit for it because you need to create all the layers yourself. But you could go in and you could look at how they set up their file and you could get inspiration from it if you wanted to. Okay, the second tab that you might see is the print tab. The print tab is kind of my area of expertise here and you'll see that there's some default sizes, tabloid, legal, letter, etc. Um, you can obviously expand the presets to see them. Some of the default settings that you might see for print are very similar to photo, right? And so the sizes are going to be different because those are standard print sizes, the sizes that you would see of letterheads and envelopes and books as opposed to just photographs. Um, the resolution will still be 300 because the intent is print just like it is for a photo. Um, your background is usually going to be a color and it's usually defaulting to white but you could change the color. And then again, make sure that you're changing your color profile to Adobe RGB and even though that the image is intended for print, which would be a CMYK output because we print with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, I still want you to edit in RGB and so you'll see that the color mode is RGB. Some of the cool templates that you might want to play around with, again, have some some mock-ups. So this is a business card mock-up here on the left-hand side, uh, an envelope mock-up. Uh, keep in mind that you want to showcase your work in your portfolio, and sometimes these mock-ups might be okay to use, but if everybody's using the same mock-up, whoever's looking at your portfolio is just going to kind of flip through and say, they just use a template. I don't know if they could recreate this if they had to. Okay, moving on. So we'll wrap up this pretty quickly because it's the same idea for, for each of the different options. But the art and illustration you'll see is different from photo and print because it, it wants to show you artboards, which is something we haven't covered yet, um, but it will create artboards instead of creating documents. And if you're familiar with Illustrator, you might be excited about that. If you're more of an InDesign person, you might be a little scared because InDesign doesn't have artboards. And if you're new to this completely, you might be saying, well, what's the difference between a document and an artboard? Don't worry about that too much yet, but the idea of a document is that there's a firm structure to what you want. I am creating a 5 by 7 card and it is going to print and that's the size that I want. But with artboards, sometimes you're sketching and you're designing and you're, you're playing around or creating textures or patterns or things like that. And they're a little bit more flexible. You can stack artboards next to each other and, and things like that. You'll also notice that when you look at the settings for your illustration, um, that they are they're similar to the rest you know this one um, has 300 resolution we're still going to have RGB it still has a color background we're still going to use the advanced options for RGB um, but you'll notice that the size is in pixels so so keep that in mind you can change it obviously you can hit this drop down and change it to be um, inches but when we're looking at illustrations a lot of time we're looking at vector art and vector art is resolution independent so it doesn't really matter the size in inches we just want to look at the image itself okay there are some templates that you can play around with uh, with uh, the art and illustration option uh, you'll notice that they're more artistic based as opposed to project based like the the print templates were for web, your settings are all going to be digital settings, so your resolution is going to be 72 because that's the default resolution or the pixels per square inch in an image that you would see on a computer. Now, web resolution is a little tricky because we say that 72 pixels per inch is the default web resolution, but when we talk about web images, we're more so concerned with the actual number of pixels that are across and tall. And so you'll see that when we look at the images, we have an image that is 1366 by 768 and Photoshop is telling us that is the most common web resolution. Um, 
And there's, there's different settings for that. So the big difference is that your image is going to be in pixels and your resolution is going to be 72. Now, the rest of the options um, you'll see are, are pretty much similar in line with the others. You'll notice under color profile, under advanced, we're saying don't manage the color. You can change that if you want to as well. Um, it's hard to manage the color for a web output image because you can't control who's seeing your project. When I'm printing something, I know it's going to be printed on the Canon Pixama Pro printer, or I know it's going to a commercial sheet-fed offset printing press, and I can prepare the artwork and send it to each individual output. But when you put something on the web, anybody can come across it and look at it, and so it's harder to, to color manage that. Uh, there are some mock-ups, and I think it's a little bit more versatile um, in the templates and the mock-ups that you are given for web. So for the photo and the print, you were given project-based things, and for illustration, you're kind of given some ideas about textures and patterns and things. But for the web, you get projects, which are kind of cool, which are for websites and things like that. But then you also get mock-ups and different ways to mock up the digital artwork that you might create for a digital portfolio. Okay, mobile is very similar to web, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Um, the difference is that you're creating stuff for specific devices and sizes. Um, one of the hardest things to me uh, when creating something is creating it for all the smaller devices. And so you can create little templates and things. The settings are gonna be pretty much the same except for the width and height and pixels will be different because you're creating them for specific devices like an iPhone or a specific model of an iPhone. Uh, you'll see that the mock-ups are going to be for iPads and iPhones and, and different Android devices as opposed to web screens and things like that. And then last but not least, something that we don't really talk about in Art 1280 but it might be cool for you to click around on is Photoshop. I would say Photoshop's not the best program to edit video in. Um, if you're serious about editing video, you should learn Premiere or other video editing software. But if you wanted to do some quick things, let's say you're a Photoshop person and you're always working in Photoshop and someone asks you to put something together really quick, you might want to come and check out the Film and Video tab and it will allow you to create motion graphics inside of Photoshop. Kind of like that they have these little templates. Um, again, if you use the stock templates, it's going to look cheesy because um, everybody can use it. But it's a quick way to make something if you needed it. And then you could always use the template and change it and make it your own so that you're personalizing it a little bit.